Have you completed Final Fantasy 16, but you want to keep the party going in this amazing world just a little bit longer? Well, here are some awesome things that you can do in the game after finishing the story. Number one, the first thing you can do is craft the best weapon and armor in the game. Unlike most other gear that you get, the Gotten Damarung and the Aurora Boris armor both require a bit of work to actually craft as they need the completion of some pretty fleshed out side quests and you have to locate and defeat some of the most difficult hunt monsters in the game. But getting them will make you as strong as you can possibly be in your first playthrough. This will make doing everything else after that point a bit easier. If you want a full guide on this because it is pretty lengthy, then you can check it out here which we have on the channel and I highly suggest you do this because the path it takes you on is a bunch of fun. Number two, if you're feeling a bit nostalgic about your journey through Final Fantasy 16, then you may want to fill out the wall of memories with curiosities. Out in the world, there are over 22 curiosities for Clive to pick up and collect. Some of these can be found out in the open world, while others may require certain conditions to be met during fights, such as not getting hit in the fight against the Midnight Raven, which will reward you the Curiosity Medal of Valor. Some of the musical orchestration roles are also part of the curiosity wall, and we all know that the music in the game is definitely amazing to listen to. Number three, the hunting board. One of the best things about Final Fantasy VII Remake was probably the VR missions. Some of these were super difficult and offered some of the hardest monster fights in the game. And this sort of system is in Final Fantasy XVI through the hunt board missions, which only hint at the location of some of the most fearsome monsters in the game. If you want to experience the variety of monsters that are in Final Fantasy XVI, then this post-game activity for you to complete and tick off every monster is definitely something to try. One of the enemies is even a massive dragon, so take it on and see if you can bring it down. Number four, you can actually make a name for yourself in the world of Balasthea by getting your renown maxed out, and it's worth your time doing, as earning points at the Patron's Whisper in the Hideaway will reward you with some great items such as the Berserker Ring that changes your precision dodge animation and gives you a slowdown time effect, which also juices you up, but you also get things like the Talisman of priming and the Genji gloves. You can increase your renown points by completing various different side quests around the world and completing the hunt board missions we mentioned before. You can also see how many points you need for the next level at the Patron's Whisper in the Hideaway and when doing side quests you can see how many rewarded renown points you will get for doing those. This makes it a bit easier to quickly target the ones that are worth your time doing. Number five, scattered across the open world are the various Arate stones which are similar to the ones in the Hideaway and if you're looking to get some of the best accessories in the game that increase the damage of your icon's ultimate attacks, then you will want to complete these. Each one will restrict you to a single icon's abilities and will have you performing special battle techniques in order to complete three stages against the clock. This is basically a fun mini game fight where you try to take down multiple opponents as quickly as possible while balancing using special moves and combos to add time to the clock. Completing these trials does not only reward you with the accessories, but also unlocks a much harder version with less time on the clock and different gear restrictions in the hideaway. So if challenges are your thing, you need to try this out. Number six, did you ever feel that you missed out on some goodies in the main missions or you just want to experience a particular fight or part of the story again? Well, you can actually do this through stage replays. This allows you to completely replay a particular section of the game with your current gear and progression. The really cool thing about this is that if you miss any collectibles, this is a great way to go and collect them because while using this feature, any items you pick up are saved as well as XP, AP and Gil. While doing this, you can also aim to get the best score possible in arcade mode for the different encounters where you're graded on how flashy and well you perform in combat. So if you want to flex on your skills, you should definitely try this out and see what score you can get. Number seven, we have previously spoken about how cool the music is in the game. And one of the ways that you can appreciate the great music in the game is by listening to it in the hideaway. If you go to the music box, you can see a full collection of the music that you've picked up or bought from vendors so far in Final Fantasy 16. Again, there are more out there in the open world and in missions, so make sure to fill out your music collection. Number eight, if you want to take the experience of continuing the game one step further, you can always complete the game again in New Game Plus, which comes with a new difficulty mode called Final Fantasy Mode. This is actually surprisingly robust as there is not only new items and gear to craft along the way, but the encounters have also been remixed with with new enemies, of course, with added difficulty, so that the experience is meant to be completely different. Also, if you want the true best weapon in the game, then the new game plus upgrade of the Gotten Damarung will give you the Ultima weapon, which is even more powerful. And this is the only way you can get it by going into new game plus. 
Number nine, next you might want to think about doing some farming for some AP so that you can upgrade and master your icon abilities. If you master them, you can then mix and match them on other icons, which allows you to create the perfect setup. But did you know it takes over 100,000 ability points to max out your icon abilities? So if you want to have everything checked off or go into New Game Plus fully juiced out, then you're going to want to farm some AP. And luckily we have a video on the channel going over that too. So drop a like down below if we've hooked you up with some things that you can do after finishing the story and the two videos on screen now we think you'll really enjoy if you did enjoy this one you don't have to watch them if you don't want to but if you did like this video you're probably gonna like these ones too and then tell us what you think after watching in the comments down below